I'm at Derby Velodrome today to bring you a really exciting pro bike. This is arguably the fastest team pro bike in the world right now as it sets sea level pursuit records as it is the team bike of Hoob Watt Bike. Track bikes are very simple, but this is without doubt one of the most exciting pro bikes we've ever done because who what bike spend an incredible amount of time carefully selecting their equipment and testing out various modifications. There's loads of amazing tech details that we're gonna go into. It's built around the Argon Electron Pro track frame set, and on it are two big Walker Ethereal disc wheels. But to get into the nitty gritty of what makes this bike so fast and all the cool little details, we're going to actually speak to Dan Bigham from Hoob Watt Bike and he's going to tell us everything about it. Dan, thanks for your time today. You're uh, a, a cyclist and a team that leave no stone unturned when it comes to your equipment and carefully selecting things. So let's start with the frame set first. Why have you, why have you gone for the Argon 18 Electron? So there's not a huge amount actually in frame sets. They're quite a small proportion of the drag, but Argon have put a lot of research into, our oh, research and development into this frame that I mean it's, it's very well suited to pursuiting. Uh, so the, the bars, for example, relatively narrow, but in a good low position so that you still stay aerodynamic in that opening lap. Very, very stiff. Um, aerodynamics wise, pretty much class leading. Uh, can't fault it, great frame. How wide are the bars? They're incredibly narrow at the front. I think we're at 36s. So not super narrow, but yeah, pretty narrow. And is that a compromise between getting the leverage when you set off on the start of the... Exactly that. You've got to stay uh, in a powerful position. Effectively, it's like a deadlift out the gate is the way to think about it. So you want a nice, wide, comfortable grip, uh, but you want to stay narrow for the aero benefit when we're still... Our opening lap average speed is still 45k an hour, so <laughs> aero is important. Nice. Um, something that has caught my eye at the front is the cockpit. That doesn't look like the kind of thing that you can buy on Wiggle. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. So they, those are developed through Watch Shop and Carbon Moss, so custom extensions for each rider's position. So we uh, dialed every rider in with your standard round extensions and where the hands need to be, where their elbows need to be, uh, all the stack height, etc. Then based on that, uh, factory custom extensions for, for each rider in their position. And that was done like optimizing positions in the wind tunnel and things like wind that? Wind tunnel and on track with our, with our test system. So we use uh, No Show Connect in combination with InfoCrank, uh, wheel speed sensor and some software that we developed ourselves so we can get CDA for each rider uh, very, very precisely and very accurately. And how much does it cost, dare I ask, to get a set of custom extensions like this? They're around 800 pounds, so nothing too bad considering the gains that you make. So uh, we're talking the region of 10 to 15 watts, which is, is huge for us. Wowzers. Right, this chain ring, massive. That's <laughs> the biggest chain ring I think I've ever seen. Uh, so this is in training um, state, I would say, at the moment. So, for example, it's got the, the info crank on, whereas on race day we have an aero crank. We run the, the rotor algae, a very, very stiff crank with a very, very good bottom bracket bearing set. It's absolutely perfect for us. Uh, so, yeah, race day we're in info crank, but with the pyramid cycle design peak chain rings. So these are they're pretty expensive and pretty hard to get your hands on because of uh, the, actually the manufacturing costs are quite outrageous. So most carbon fibre, that you, you and I know of is in a, an epoxy matrix, so effectively a plastic. These are in a, a peak matrix, so a different type of plastic. That just means that the surface friction is outrageously low. Uh, but just the material cost alone is something like 150 pounds for a chain ring. Yeah. And what size is that one? So that's a 61. Uh, on race day, that'll go up to a 65. And what do you run on the back? On the yeah. back is a 15 on race day. So uh, from inches, that's a 115 to a 117, depending on what we're running at the front, 64 or 65. Mm. And how does that differ from what other people run or? Uh, so in team pursuit, we're probably slightly bigger and in individual pursuit, we're a fair amount bigger. So we'll individual pursuit on between 110 and 112 from an inch perspective. So on, on ratios, that's a 62 on the front. So a lot bigger than most of the guys, but just one of, the, one of the things that suits our physiology. Okay, and also the chain on there, that looks like it's got a special coating on it. Yeah, uh, that's a uh, watch up wax chain. Um, just one of the little gains, and we keep, keep persevering on that, keep improving, it's small little things, but they definitely make a difference. Drivetrain efficiency for us is somewhere in the region of we're losing 10 to 12 watts. If we can uh, keep shipping away and, and get another watt, it definitely helps. Yeah, and you wax your own chains? We wax our own chains, we do indeed. Nice. Yeah, in fact, well, the other, again, it's in training config, but on race day, we have uh, carbon rear sprockets, which is another thing that we've pioneered through pyramid cycle design. 
they've done a lot of development with us to get them to a state where they work well, perform well, um, and they're quick. Um, the saddle at the back, that's an Adamo saddle. Yeah. What, what's the, the thinking behind your, your saddle? It's the ISM, we all run the ISM uh, Adamo attack. Uh, there's a few different benefits to it. Primarily is the, the support it gives you. Um, so you're in such an aggressive position that effectively your undercarriage is under a lot of load. So you sit on your sit bones rather than on uh, the soft tissue under there, which is great for just effectively keeping blood flow good there. And it allows you to tilt around your pelvis quite a bit so you can keep quite a good back shape without limiting any of your, your pelvic tilt. So the Walker Brothers wheels, I believe you've worked on the design of these. We have. To sort of optimize. Very, very unique. If you were to pull one, you'd be quite, uh, pull the skin off one, you'd be very surprised about how they're made. They're effectively um, UD carbon fiber with no epoxy matrix, uh, strips or spokes. Uh, all tensioned on the inside with them an aero skin. So a very lightweight skin that does nothing more than the aero surface that it provides. Uh, but yeah, we worked on different profiles, different rim widths, different interactions around the tyre. How do you shape effectively what would be known as the, the braking track relative to the tyre and how does that impact on the aero? So we've, we've been through the uh, development loop quite a few times on this and around two years into it and there's still more gains to be had, but starting to uh, scrape the barrel as it were on wheels. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm guessing you're not just using the Vittoria Pistas because they have cool looking tan sidewalls. <laughs> uh, they're quick tyres at the end of the day, pretty much across the board everyone's on uh, Pista speeds nowadays. Um, I think there's more to be had there, but that's uh, one of the development things we have in our sort of uh, arsenal and hopefully we can get some quicker tyres out of them soon. And these are 23 millimetre as well. Yeah. Like traditionally on the track, people have been running 19s. And... Even smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, again, it's just the optimization around the wheels. So it's something we wanted to push. We knew there's small rolling resistance gains from a wider tyre. So we went down the route of saying, well, let's go with a wide rim. And what can we do around that? And how do we optimise the wheel accordingly? So it's just another advantage of being able to work close with the manufacturer and say, this is what we think we need to do. We might take a hit first off, but if we go through the development cycle for a few months, we can probably recover and then make an improvement at the end of it. But not 25. Not 25. We, we've tried bigger. Uh, but the biggest issue actually is frame clearance. Just track frames, as much as they're still designing around wider tyres, 25 is a very, very tight fit. Right. Um, are there any other details on the bike that you would that we'd like to cover. Yeah, you'd like to talk. I think pedals is probably one that Johnny is not showing off today. Uh, so typically on race day, we run, run speed plays. Um, we have a modified uh, speed play plate as well that reduces our stack height and improves the aero on the shoe. Uh, just small little gains, but they definitely make a big old difference. And obviously it's quite an, an important part. People ignore the shoes quite, quite a lot, but the uh, shoes are a big part of your aero drag. So. And if, you, if your stack height's lower, that means- well, your Saddle's, saddle's lower. lower. So you're lower. Everything's like you're all a bit, you're a little bit more, a little bit more uh, aero and slightly better biomechanical efficiency. But as I said, we're in a training state with the, the kit at the moment, so it's a bit more about hard wearing, durability, get through those hard efforts rather than out and out performance on race day. Cool. Uh, something else I've noticed is this skewer you've got in at the front here. Mm -hmm. It looks um, very aero indeed. Yeah, clean. So that's a View Speed S4 skewer uh, from America, titanium, real nice, very clean, does the job. Uh, holds in the Kogel ceramic bearings that are in front and rear. So it's just, yeah, clean setup. it's good. Has, is there a, a, a stone left unturned on this bike? Is there anything that you would, you would change? Oh, there's a few things in the pipeline for next year, yeah. especially around the front end. We've got some good gains coming, we're very excited. Well, I guess we'll have to uh, come back and do another video and find out about the gains next year. Another cool little detail, under the saddle tucked there is a Garmin mount so that the guys can put on a Garmin and record their ride data during training. But you're not supposed to ride with a computer on the track and that's why it's not mounted up here or during races. I'm gonna pick it up because I've been told that this bike weighs 8.2 kilos, which you might think is quite heavy, but for the demands of pursuiting and riding around the track, it doesn't make too much difference. Dan actually reckons that a kilogram equates to two tenths of a second over four kilometers, which is the length of a pursuit. And also, I think I should do a free hub sound check. Are you ready for this? Uh, there, there's no sound because he hasn't got a free hub because it's a track bike. Thanks a lot for showing you your bike, Dan. Much appreciated. And we hope you found this video uh, enjoyable and useful. And if you have, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And to watch another pro bike video, well, you can click on Dan's massive chain ring.